An interview works both ways. Really think about how can you be tying your experience back to the role they're applying for. Yep. We had to ban him from the platform. I wished him good luck on his job search, and oh. he hung up on me. He said, block. Welcome to Job Search Stories. I'm Jen, a career coach and your new go-to gal for all things career advice. And I'm Gina, and today we're going to just talk about how we can help you navigate this crazy world of job searching and get you to your next job. Yeah. And in today's episode, we're going to be breaking down the recruiter interview and how to ace it. As someone who's really, really good at interviewing, I'm super excited for this episode. I've aced every interview I've ever had. I bet you have. But do you have any horror stories? Has there ever been an interview that maybe didn't go well or was kind of mm-hmm. crazy? I don't think I've had anything that's too like kooky, crazy or wacky. I can tell you uh, a bit of a horror story that Mm -hmm. I've seen working with job seekers. Okay. Okay. I'm excited. So I've told you before, I led a team of career coaches. Mm -hmm. We did this on a hiring platform where we matched candidates and uh, employers, right? Mm -hmm. So you have one side of the house, which is mine. Uh, Career coaches, we prepped the candidates with interview to make sure that they were presenting their best selves when they got to the employers. Okay. And so we had the client success side of the house, right? So they're the ones who manage the relationships with employers. Yeah. So one day I have somebody from client success come up to me and tell me that, um, because I'm a manager, Mm -hmm. um, they asked me to follow up about a particular job seeker who had a really bad interaction with a recruiter. Uh, They said the job seeker was really rude, was calling her names, <gasps> using some foul language. Ah. And so it was my job to follow up with him yeah. and get his side of the story. So I call him, um, introduce myself, let him know um, why I'm calling, mm-hmm. need to find out about this interaction with this yeah. recruiter. And he was like, yeah, she was asking me questions about my experience that was clearly on my resume. And I was really offended that she didn't take the time to read it. I was offended that I had to do an interview. (laughs) I was, he was offended. And so, of course, I let him know, well, there are a lot of reasons why recruiters are asking this question. You know, they're looking to hear things in your words. And he was basically like, you know what? She was a B and you're a B. (gasps) And that B is in beautiful. You are B as in beautiful. That was not what he was saying to me. Oh, no. So I basically had to tell him that, we had to ban him from the platform for <gasps> violating our community standards. Got banned. And I wished him good luck on his job search. Wow. And he hung up on me. You said block. <laughs> can't. I said, I said, oh my God. Bye bye. You can't be talking to recruiters like that. Or just like other human beings. Right. That's so mean. So these things happen. Oh, well, I hope that person out there learned their lesson and got a job. I hope he did too. Yeah. You know, he had great experience. He did need to work on his interviewing skills, though. Yeah. I mean, I feel like what do you think people can take from <laughs> that very uh, particular experience? I think they kind of need a better understanding of what a recruiter does and what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. That whole, oh, it's on my resume. Like, Why I don't are need they to explain it to you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oof. That's, that's a really... But we're going to talk about that. Yeah. I mean, I feel like... I'm okay with recruiter interviews. Mm -hmm. I think I know the purpose. That's why I'm like fine with them. How do you feel about recruiter interviews? Yeah, I absolutely love them. I mean, for me, I've got a really great understanding of them and what they're trying to do, right? Um, But I can see how they might be difficult for some people because if you think about it, the recruiter is your gateway Mm -hmm. into the company. Yeah. So there's usually kind of like two camps of job seekers I've seen where they either um, take it, you know, seriously and they want to prepare for it or they don't consider the recruiter interview an actual interview and they don't prepare for it at all. Um, And I just want to say a recruiter interview is an actual interview. You should come prepared. Yeah. I mean, how do you even prepare for that? Like, I feel like, do you feel like recruiter interviews are kind of like more informal or not? You absolutely want to be professional. I would say come in with an expectation of what they're trying to accomplish, right? Recruiters are trying to fill a role. Mm -hmm. And so when they're asking you questions, they're trying to qualify you for the position. Yeah. So they're going to be a little bit different than an interview with a hiring manager. Yeah. So for example, if you're scheduled a first round interview, um, it's likely going to be this recruiter one. It's likely going to be a screener. Mm -hmm. Um, 
it might be 15 to 30 minutes in length. Okay. So typically if it's on the shorter end, you should prepare for more qualifying questions. Yeah. And then if it's a longer interview, like 30 minutes to an hour, that's probably something with a hiring manager or with somebody on the team who's yeah. really looking to assess your skills. Yeah. So there are like some distinct differences between yeah. a recruiter and a hiring manager because I didn't know that. I, well, yeah. I didn't know that in the beginning. I feel yeah. like now I kind of have a grasp of it, but could you like explain it to pretend I'm looking for a job? It's my first job. Like what's the difference between a recruiter and a hiring manager? Right. So usually they're, they're two very different positions in a company. Mm -hmm. um, and you see this in some like I would say small to medium sized companies will sometimes have a recruiter. Sometimes companies hire recruiting agencies yeah. to handle the first screen calls for them. So they might not have this role um, as an internal position. It's outsourced, mm. but they're performing the same functions. Okay. So when you think about a recruiter and the types of questions that they might be asking and what they're looking for in answers, mm. they're going to be what we would call like introductory or qualifying questions. Okay. So an introductory question would be like, tell me about yourself. Tell me why you're interested in this company. Tell me why you're leaving your current, current job. Company, yeah. um, and maybe the question about salary. Yeah. And then salary could be a qualifier as well mm -hmm. because they want to know if you're uh, within the budget for the role. Yeah. Uh, but you're also going to see questions like, do you have an experience using um, a specific software if yeah. it's required for the role? Do you have, how many years of experience do you have in the field? Mm -hmm. You know, really trying to check off those boxes right. that the hiring manager has said you need to have yeah. to be able to be successful and meet the responsibilities of the role. Right. So the recruiter is kind of like first date vibes, just trying to make sure that you're a good they're Good like a fit. screener. Yeah. Yeah. They're checking some boxes. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. A hiring ma manager, if you think about it, is going to be kind of like a later stage decision maker. Okay. So they're going to be the ones that know the details about the job right. and the day to day responsibilities. So um, a question that I might see is when you think about the kinds of questions that a recruiter would have for you versus what a hiring manager would have for you mm -hmm. um, and the level of detail that you should get into when you're giving an answer. Yeah. So with a recruiter, you want to keep it short and sweet. Yeah. Again, they're just trying to qualify. They're checking off those boxes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you don't want to go into heavy detail Yeah. Um, because they're not going to have a full understanding of yeah. what you're going to be doing day to day. Right. Yeah. Um, and I see this a lot with like technical job seekers, when mm -hmm. I worked with them, they expected recruiters to know all of the things. Right. That's not the recruiter's job, right? right? Like they're trying to assess your skills mm -hmm. based off of what the hiring manager said that they need. And then the hiring manager, when they ask questions, that's where you want to go into more detail. Yeah. You know, that's when you want to start using things like the STAR method, mm -hmm. you know, situation, task, action, and result to yep. really give a full, you know, context and um, really describe not just what you've done, mm -hmm. but how you did it. You're so smart. Um, just had to let you know that. <laughs> um, but I feel like, okay, so if you're saying like kind of the recruiter, you're keeping it short and sweet. Short and sweet. You're really just making sure that you're qualified for this role. Right. How do you kind of rise above this noise? Because I'm assuming mm. recruiters are interviewing tons of people for sure. in a given day for this specific role. Yeah. So one is just being clear, right? Mm -hmm. You're going in with this expectation of, I'm trying to let them know what and how my qualifications and skills match the role. Yeah. So it really comes down to making that connection about role relevancy. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is one, definitely come in prepared, like we've said, really have a good understanding about, you know, the job description yeah. and what those required and preferred skills are. Yeah. And really think about, you know, if you have that understanding and they're asking you questions, mm -hmm how can you be tying your experience back to the role that they're applying for? Because yep. they want to know that you, again, meet those qualifications and they want to know that you're kind of enthusiastic about the role too. Right. So a little bit of charisma. And then there's also the follow-up, right? I have actually received handwritten thank you notes in the past. Do people still do that? They do. They do. And Is it's it really effective? sweet when they do. Is Absolutely. It, okay, it can be nice, but is it effective? Like On people like me, it is for sure. All right. <laughs> but also, um, handwritten, I know that's a little bit extra these days, but an email takes mm -hmm. 
two minutes to write. Yeah. Um, so easy to send. And again, it's a really great follow-up. It gives you the opportunity to express your interest and enthusiasm yeah. for the role again. Um, but it's also a really great opportunity, I find, with job seekers where let's say a person has done an interview yeah. and they're reflecting back on it afterwards and they're thinking like, oh, maybe I didn't answer that question yeah. quite as well as I could have. Or I really meant mm. to talk about this particular piece of experience because it was related yeah. and I just forgot. Um, take the opportunity to drop a line in there and just say, hey, I also forgot to mention yeah. that I did this. Um, and I think that would be, that experience is really relevant to this position and mm -hmm. it'll help me get started even faster. See, that's really smart because I feel like in the past when I've sent like thank you emails or like follow up emails, I'm like, oh my gosh, I enjoyed our chat. Let me know. <laughs> like, you know I like, mean, you want to say you enjoyed the chat. Okay. I would also say a really great tip for thank you notes is to kind of have a callback. Yeah. So if there was something that you connected on mm -hmm. or something that the recruiter said, hey, like that's really great. That's really relevant. Yeah. Or even if it was not related to the job at all, but you found a commonality. Mm -hmm. Maybe you went to the same school. Yep. Maybe you like the same foods or hobbies. However, yep. it came up, really having that callback will help you make a stronger human connection. Basically, just being human and not a robot will get you being a job. human. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, do you feel like you can like do anything to make like the recruiter's job a little easier? Like I know you mentioned like, hey, if you didn't completely answer a question, maybe drop in some stuff in a follow up. But like, what can you do to kind of like seem like you're a good partner in this little relationship? Yeah. Um, so connecting to relevancy and connecting your experience to the job, making that tie back is going to help them share that information with the hiring manager mm -hmm. so that if there's any question about your experience and whether or not you're qualified, yeah. if you've, you've already connected the dots, they're able to pass that message along and right. help make that connection for the hiring manager as well. Right. I feel like for me, like I've always kind of felt like, dang, like I don't want to like do all this with a recruiter because like they're not the person I'm going to be working with. They're not my hiring manager. Like, why do you have to answer? Tell me about yourself. Like, why do you have to do all that? You absolutely have to do that. I mean, if you think about it, if you've been preparing for this interview anyway, mm -hmm. you already know how the job is connected. Yeah. Right. You already know how your experience is relevant to this role. Mm -hmm. So you're really just communicating that to them. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's probably certain things like you're saying relevancy that the recruiter is looking for in like any of your answers. But can you give me like some other like things that a recruiter is looking for when they're chatting with you? Yeah. So um, when they're looking to qualify, they might be looking to years of experience. Mm -hmm. um, if they're looking, let's say a particular question that they might ask right. would be, you just said it. Tell me about yourself. The and best question. It's a I'm great really question. I'm really good at answering that question. I wouldn't. Don't make me do it, but <laughs> I want to hear it, but we'll get to that. Yeah, I think yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll do a live example and it should be yours. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay. Um, so with this question in particular, mm -hmm. first of all, great to prepare for because you're likely going to be asked it multiple times in an interview process, yeah. right? It's going to start with the recruiter. Hiring manager is probably going to ask it. If you meet with the team member, mm -hmm. they might want to ask it too. Um, so thinking about the type of story you want to tell yeah. um, and what information is most relevant to the role mm -hmm. is really what the keys of success are. Yeah. So I've had people really start from the very beginning yeah. of their history when they start this story. Yeah. Because they're not really sure what they need to say, right? Yeah. You have so many videos on that though. I make a lot of videos on it. Tell me about yourself. Look it up. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of videos. But I make a lot of videos on it because it really is such a popular question. People really don't know how to answer it. Because yeah, I'm like, oh yeah, I was born in this place and I have this many cats. And like, because sometimes I think that's what, they just want to like get to know me. They want to be my friend. I do bring up my cats in interviews, I think, but I don't do it and tell me about Giving yourself. yourself away as a cat lady. You know what? It's because sometimes I get the interview question, are you a dog person or a cat person? And what does that tell somebody about you? I don't know. I think they just don't like cat people and they're trying to weed us out. Yeah, I agree. No, cat people matter too. <laughs> um, so with tell me about yourself, mm -hmm. when you're thinking about what is the best way to answer this question, yeah. there's one format that I always lean towards, which yeah. is going to be the present past future format. Past, so that future. is yep. where you're going to start with a present statement. Mm -hmm. What are you doing right now? Okay. 
what have you done in the past? Mm -hmm. What's your, tell me about the years of relevant experience that you have. Yeah. Maybe it's your education. Maybe it's a past couple of roles. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's a project that you did that yeah. was super relevant and you want to call back to. Um, but what's really valuable is going to be the future statement. Yeah. So this is where you're able to kind of tie it all together and really focus on how this role is relevant in your career journey. Yeah. And more specifically, you know, how you see yourself really thriving at this company because yeah. of something you've learned about them. Yeah. And I feel like even like you're saying, like the length, like of the answer and like that, that format, it's really interesting because it's like some people, maybe they can't do it over Zoom and they have to do it in person. How do right. you like kind of keep those nuggets of information in your head when you're like sitting in front of someone answering that. Tell me about yourself. Question. Yeah, I think having a formula always helps. Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking about how long it should be with this answer and with just interview questions in general, two minutes is kind of a max. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're thinking about timing with a recruiter interview, if it's 15, 20, 30 minutes long, they yep. likely have a set number of questions that they're trying to get through, right? Because yep. they want to tick those boxes. They want to qualify you. Yeah. So it's going to be on the shorter end. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you probably already know this because you're a job search expert, but tell me about yourself is really based off of an elevator pitch, Yeah. right? Yeah. So the theory behind an elevator pitch is that it should be 30 seconds in length because mm. it's the time it would take you to ride up or down an elevator. What if you're like me and two things? You're very, it's a high rise. <laughs> you're a very long winded person or the elevator in your building is really, really slow. This is a shout out to my property manager. It's that elevator. <laughs> that elevator. Yeah. Fixed. Fix it. Um, so we talked about what a recruiter might be looking for. Yep. Starting with where you are. It's your present statement. Present. Past statement. Past. What's your ex relevant experience, the experience you want to highlight? Yep. Future. What are you looking for next in your career? Future. Okay. Gina, let's do it. Whew, here we go. <laughs> okay. So do I say like, my name is? <laughs> is that how you start it? No, like that's actually no. a legit question. Cause like, no, you should not start Sometimes with my I'm like, hey, is. I'm so and so, and this is me. If you're in a networking event yeah. and you, let's say you're at a career fair yeah. or a job fair and you've just met this person. Then yes. Then yes. You would say, hi, my name is Gina. And you would go on. But the recruiter, they got your resume. They They've know who you are. They've probably already been talking to you for at least a minute or two. That's true. They may not know everything on your resume, but they will likely know your first name. Okay. So I got this. I'm okay. ready. So I am currently an expert of job seekers here at Indeed. And in my past experience, I've been trying to help people through educational videos. In the future, I would like to help more brands figure out how they create educational videos for their viewers. That was less than 30 seconds, right? Yeah, you didn't tell me what your role was. Oh, am I supposed to? Yeah. They know, they have my resume. Mm -mm. See, like that's also, I'm... I'm a, I'm really well, on you, the side of that you guy. You said you're who, an expert. How yeah. are you an expert? What qualifies you as an expert? I got hired. For what role? Um, a marketing manager role. Well, I feel like a good question to ask is like, what if I don't want to help job seekers anymore? Like, what if I want to get into a new industry? If that's the industry that you're applying for, then you would talk about the career transition. Yeah. And you would say, you know what? I've really valued my time being able to work and help job seekers. Yeah. And I learned a lot. And I'm really looking to apply some of those learnings here right. by doing what for you. Right? Right. I feel like that's probably like the toughest thing for some people is like, hey, I've been in the same industry for yeah. years and I want to get into a new industry, maybe like the industry that you've been dreaming of since you graduated, got your degree or since you started working. Like, how do you kind of convince that recruiter to be like, this person is qualified, even though they've never done this thing? Yeah, that's how you make that connection, right? Yeah. You've thought about those transferable skills. Okay. And so how have you been able to apply those learnings in a totally unrelevant industry into what you would be doing now? Yeah, I feel like... The one thing that I think I have an issue with with the recruiter interview is like, they don't, do they understand what I do? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't like think they know what my job is the way that you do because we're besties. Yeah, they won't necessarily know. Like, for example, if you talk about channel growth. Yeah. They may not necessarily know, like is that metrics. a good percentage? Right. But they'll know, that sounds like an achievement. Right. And you know what? It sounds like something that the hiring manager may want to dig in more about. Yeah. Sounds like maybe they sound they found some success there. Yeah. 
they might be able to find some success here. I think that's also a tricky thing too, is like, what if you think something is like a great, like you're successful, you did that thing. And then they give that information to the hiring manager and the hiring manager is like, that means nothing to me. That's what you, again, you're getting back to role relevancy, yeah. right? You've thought about how you're going to connect this, that previous experience and that success yeah. to the job that you're having now. Yeah. So you communicate that connection to them mm-hmm. and that makes it easier. That makes sense. I mean, I think overall, like we've kind of talked now, let's like get into the nitty gritty of you got past that phone screener. Yeah. Congratulations. You got past the phone screen. I got past the phone screener. Right. Now you're on to the hiring manager. I'm moving on. Yeah. Right. So now you're going to be asked kind of a range of behavioral based interview questions. Okay. And some more like situational or an experience based, right? Okay. So this is where you might hear questions that start with, tell me about a time when, Mm -hmm. give me an example of. And usually when you hear those, that's a signal that it's a behavioral based question or it's a question that can be answered using that STAR method. So situation, task, action, and result. Mm -hmm. So when you think about how you're answering these questions for a hiring manager, you're wanting to paint a story for them. You're not just telling them what you did, Mm -hmm. you're telling them how you did it, and you should be ending it with a positive impact. Right. And sometimes it's not all always a success, Mm -hmm. right? People don't always succeed at everything that they do. Yeah. Um, Especially when you take into consideration a question about conflict. Yeah. So it's not necessarily about being right. It's about learning and growth. Right. So as long as you're ending that question or, you know, any of your questions with a result, um, it's not always quantifiable, right? Yeah. Um, But that's how you know you've kind of told a good, succinct story. Right. But like, should I expect them to like, know like basically everything I told the recruiter or am I basically doing this all over again? Yeah. You're starting brand new. It's a new person. And I get this question a lot too, Mm -hmm. especially when you've been moved on from the recruiter to the hiring manager and you're asked questions about your experience all over again or things that are on your resume all over again. It's annoying. And you're like that guy. You're like, why are you asking me questions about my experience when I already put it on my resume? What the heck you be? Why are you doing it to me? (laughs) And here's why. It's because one, you know, a recruiter and a hiring manager are two different people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there are sourcers and there are recruiters. Yeah. So there are multi-levels to recruiting. A sourcer? Like a sorcerer? Not a sorcerer. What is a sorcerer? A sorcerer. So a sorcerer is like a recruiter, Mm -hmm. uh, they are there to only find potential candidates. Okay. So they might be looking at social media sites. They might be Mm. looking at the internal um, applicant tracking system. Okay. They're trying to find people and they call it like build a pipeline of potential candidates that could be a good fit for the job. They're just finding me. They're just just finding you. There she is. There she is. She looked great. Yeah. I want to talk to her. Actually, I won't talk to her because I'm a sorcerer, but that recruiter should talk to her. So they're just really looking for people. They're looking for people. All over the Yeah, they're trying to identify potential candidates. Okay. And so sometimes a recruiter is that person too. They're doing all the things. It's called full cycle recruiting. Or sometimes they're not and it's somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so that's the distinction as to why somebody, that recruiter, may not know what's on your resume. It's because they didn't find you, but they're here to screen you and talk to you. You are opening up my eyes and my brain because I really didn't know that like- Are we learning? I am. Okay, good. Um, So what do you think is kind of like the, the thing that people get kind of like frustrated with the most when it comes to a recruiter interview? I feel like there's probably some things where people are like, like that guy who are like, She's a bee. I don't want to do this because I don't want to tell her about what's on my resume because she should have just known. Honestly, I think that's one of the main pieces of frustration is having to speak to your experience when you've already submitted an application. Yeah. But if you think about it, what it is is an opportunity for you to be able to sell yourself and to paint a better picture about the experience as it relates to the role. Because sometimes on your resume, you don't necessarily get to do that, right? You know, you've constructed these bullet points. Um, You should be able to define impact in those as well. But being able to talk about those bullet points and those pieces of experience in an interview allows you to make that connection back to that relevancy of the role. You want to know what my most frustrating part of talking to your career is? I absolutely do. Salary. Dun, dun, dun. Oh my gosh, you don't like to talk about money? It's kind of rude to talk about money. No, I hear you. Um, When 
I was leading a team of career coaches, we had a uh, kind of menu of services, if you will, right, yeah. of the different types of coaching that we could help you help you with. And mm-hmm. so resume for sure, number one requested service. Okay. People need one help on their resumes. Um, interviewing, mm-hmm. close second after that. Um, salary was the least requested service that we had. I got it. And it's because... It's not that people don't have the questions, but they are very afraid to talk about it. Right. So tell me this. Why is a recruiter asking me about my salary range? Because they have a budget. They need to know that they can afford you. Yeah. You know, that's- I'm expensive. (laughs) You're expensive. I'm real expensive. And you might be too expensive for them. Yeah. And that's okay because if you're too expensive for them, they're not going to be able to meet your needs. Yeah. And you're- entitled to have your own needs, right? You know what you have been making. Mm -hmm. You know what you need to make in a next role to continue to grow. You've already told me you don't like it. You don't don't want to talk about about salary, but I know that you've been asked because they they always ask. You've got jobs. So they've always asked at some point about your salary. What have you typically said? Um, Okay. So I think the time that I think is the most distinct for me was like my second big girl job. Like this is after I've been at my first big girl job for a couple years mm-hmm. now and I was ready to make a change. Um, and there was no recruiter involved in this. It was straight hiring manager. Okay. So yeah, there was no recruiter involved, but still the question was asked, like, what's your salary expectations? I did not know what to say because I was making chump change before, like was not making any money. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, like I kind of just gave like some random number after. So you gave a number. I gave a number only because the hiring manager gave me a number first. And the only information I had at that time was to like say something a little over Mm -hmm. that and like give like maybe like a, just like the range. Like given a range. Yeah. Yeah. And um, didn't feel great about it because I was like, also, I think I have to um, point out that this was in like not for profit. So I knew I wasn't going to make a lot of money. Right. So I was like trying to be like, I know my worth, but also like, they ain't got no money. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. They can't afford me, but I really wanted to work there. So yeah, that was like the most distinct time that I ever like, I felt a little proud, but at the same time I was like, I don't even know if I did this right. Am I just taking what this person is telling me and rolling with it? Yeah. Well, not for profit is kind of an interesting industry because yeah. usually there's not a ton of wiggle room. Yeah. Um, but I always say ask. Yeah. For sure. I, I'm pretty sure I just, he was like, oh, well, I can do what I told you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, came back with so like, uh, me giving a range was yeah. useless. Yeah. But you tried. I tried. Yeah. And I made some money. Yeah. It wasn't well, bad money either. So that's. I that's mean, fun. there are things that you did right. Yeah. You you gave a range, which is really good. Prime and myself. they gave a number first, which you always want to try to get to. Yeah. And so when I've worked with people there, I usually recommend a few different ways in mm-hmm. which you can approach the question about what are your salary expectations. Yeah. So we'll preface by saying you should absolutely do some research yeah. to really understand what you should be making yeah. based off of multiple factors, right? Yes. Do you know what kind of things you should be looking for? Um, I want to hear them, Gina. What I was making. I feel like okay, I, I got salary. Think current salary. Um, industry standard. You know, you can look that stuff up on Indeed, actually. You absolutely can. Looking up what someone of a, a role or similar role is making. And also the economy. We kind of talked about that right. um, a little bit before in an episode. Those yeah. are some things. Yeah, those I don't are know absolutely if those are all some the things. things. So, looking at your years of experience, okay, that too. Looking at what skills that you have mm-hmm. that are unique to you. Yeah. So, I think one that's really great that I always um, want to call out, um, especially because I live in Texas mm-hmm. and we're a bilingual, multilingual state. Yeah. Um, if you can speak multiple languages, Ooh. that is that sets you apart. Is she bilingual? This lady? Yeah. No. Oh. No. So you don't have those <laughs> skills. I don't have, I don't have those skills. I can't negotiate on those skills. But other people do. Okay. I, I can't like, negotiate on those okay. skills. And maybe that's why I'm like, oh, you can? Oh, you should definitely you. talk about that because yeah. that makes you more qualified than me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So She's not qualified. <laughs> she's not She's not qualified. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, what are those special skills? Yeah. 
you looking at role is definitely good. Mm-hmm. Looking at your local market. Yeah. Right. Uh, because sometimes I hear people that are comparing themselves to their friends. To me in New York. <laughs> yes. We're making the big bucks. Different cost of living, different expectations. Yeah. And sometimes even different industries can impact it. Right. right. So if you're in marketing in higher ed, you're you may not make as much as you would if you're marketing in tech. Yeah. Um, there are just certain industries and certain positions that pay more because yeah. it's I mean, yeah, their funding is completely different. So really looking at that. Yeah. When it comes to how you can answer, mm-hmm. uh, you can be really straightforward and yeah. share that range like you did. Good for you, Gina. That yeah. is definitely a successful tactic. Yeah. Um, and that worked because you had the range yeah. from the employer. Yeah. Like, what if they also asked me, like, what I made? Should I answer? Like, should I be like, this is my current salary? I always go above. Yeah. And I always tell people also, to go like, above. It's rude to talk about money. Mind your business. And you can always put it back. You can, can you say no? Flip can you be back. like, no, I don't want to tell you. If they're using it as a qualifier, you can. They'll yeah. probably just keep asking you. They'll probably like, ask you What again. if I just am like, no, I'm not going to get the job? So I don't want to talk about my current salary. There are certain states that have mm-hmm. salary transparency laws. Okay. So there's um, about eight specific states that have some really good ones, including okay. California, including Connecticut. Um, we don't have them in Texas, not yet. But mm. these laws are actually really great because some of them say yeah. that you, a company, mm-hmm. cannot reject a job seeker for asking Ooh. about salary. Getting protected by that law. And that if a job yeah. seeker or a candidate asks you about salary, yeah. you have to disclose it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just feel like, and maybe this is just like an irrational thing for me to feel. I just feel like they're going to like lowball me if I tell them my current salary and then my range is like way above that. Right. Which is why you don't have to respond with your current salary. You can respond with what you're looking to make. Yeah. And, and you then can what if basically they still say, lowball me though? You like, say a little ball me. What if they still are like, oh, I can't meet that? Like, should you just? What That's do you a do? personal question for you. Yeah. Are you in a place where you're willing and able to yeah. take a lower salary? No. Then it may not be a good fit. And I think that's something that people have a hard time wanting to accept, especially when it's a job that they are really really interested in. If it's not meeting a need for you and if salary really is a need, then it may not necessarily be a good fit for you and you may have to walk away. Yeah. I mean, what if the recruiter literally doesn't even mention it? Like it's almost the end of the call and you're like, ooh, they're going to talk about that money? Oh, they're not even going to ask me? Yeah. Should you be like, hey, Well, yeah, because that's a qualifier for you. Yeah. Right? You need to know, is this job going to be able to pay me what I need to make? And that's an important decision for you. You know, that's an important piece of information. So you can decide whether or not you want to continue on to the next round. Yeah. And again, I know we've said this before and it's, you know, bears repeating, but an interview works both ways. Yeah. That was my follow-up question. What are good questions to ask a recruiter to find out if you even want to go to that right. next stage. And this is a good prime time to point. Like there are different questions you would ask a recruiter so than you would ask for a hiring yeah. manager, right? Yeah. So with recruiters, of course, if they haven't mentioned salary, that's a good question to ask. Yeah. Um, anything that's time related. Mm-hmm. How soon are you looking to fill this role? Mm-hmm. Um, how soon are you looking to schedule a next round interview? Yeah. What are next steps? Mm-hmm. You know, you can ask them about the day-to-day for a role, but they're right. likely only going to give you something very high level. Like that really is a question for the, the hiring, hiring manager. manager. Mm-hmm. Anything around like, what are the details of the responsibilities of this job? Yeah. Um, how will my performance be measured? Yeah. You know, what does success look like in this role? That's the type of information that somebody outside of recruiting, the, the person who's really like managing the team or They'll, making that decision, yeah. they're better qualified to make. Right, right. I mean, I feel like you've given so much good information. I'm about to ace this uh, interview that I have after I this. You do. <laughs> no, actually, I hope you do really badly. I want That's to so continue to work with you. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> but all in all, if you could give one takeaway to some listeners, like what what is a, a, um, a recruiter interview, how you should treat it and how you feel you you can ace it. Yeah. So thinking about a recruiter interview, just know this is that entry point. Mm-hmm. This is the time where you should be really succinct. Yeah. You should make their job easier mm-hmm. by making those connections, 
even if you're looking at just transferable skills, yep. even if you're just making that career switch, yeah. you need to be able to make that clear line into how it's totally relevant to what they're looking for right now. Mm -hmm. And just know that ultimately a recruiter really is your friend. You know, buddy. they want to help you and move you into the next portion of the hiring process. Mm -hmm. So ask them questions. Mm -hmm. Ask them if you're feeling like you don't know if you answered yeah. their questions right or if there's more. It's okay to say, you know, are there any, um, do you have any questions about my experience that um, I could elaborate on or yeah. I could help um, answer questions about, you know, get give you any clarity so mm -hmm. that um, you can really see how I'm qualified for the role. Yeah. You know, it's okay to ask that. Yeah. I mean, all in all, let the recruiter help you. And if you even got to that stage, something looked good on that resume. Good on you. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I overall still feel very icky about talking about money and I just feel like this whole salary stuff, it just gives me anxiety, mm -hmm. get very anxiety ridden. Do you feel like there's any way that I can change my mindset when it comes to talking about that cash, that cash money? Yeah, so I have absolutely worked with people who have said, I'm not comfortable. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give a salary. Yeah. And... I can explain the value of it in terms of you're helping to, you know, again, understand if you can even afford to take this position. Yeah. And sometimes like that's really good to help reset and just, you know, remind yourself that this is your opportunity to really understand if it's a right fit for you. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, again, they're like, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I just don't want to answer it. And so if you're in that situation where you're just not even comfortable yeah. and you don't want to broach the subject, you can put it back on the recruiter mm -hmm. and you can say to them, you know, actually, um, I'm really interested in knowing more about yeah. the range for this position. You know, I think that with my skills and experience, we can come to a position where we're both mutually happy. Yeah. What do you have budgeted for this role? I just realized we have a YouTube video on this too. So um, if they need more advice, they can go find that YouTube video. Um, but also I think I like what you're saying because it also makes me think like if no one else is going to do it, I got to do it. I got to advocate for myself to get that money that I need and want in this role. Yeah, absolutely. And I think in interviews, it sometimes feels like you don't have agency. Yeah. Like you're just being asked questions and you're only there to answer them. Under that spotlight, feel like you're being interrogated. Right. Just not a good time. Right. But you you do have that power to mm -hmm. be able to ask those questions. They need you too. Absolutely. And it's also important to remember that when you're asked the salary question, at the beginning of this hiring process with mm -hmm. the with the recruiter, this is not the point for negotiations. Yeah. This oh. is the point for you to qualify. Yeah. They're qualifying you. You're qualifying them. Mm -hmm. If you're in that range, yeah. okay, then you can have that conversation later. Moving to the next And round. even if yeah. you're above it and you're like, well, you know what? I want to find out more. Yeah. It's always okay to say, um, before we get into talking about salary, there's still a lot I really want to learn about this job yeah. um, and about what the roles and responsibilities are. Right. You know, I'd really love to continue interviewing. And then if we both decide that it's a good fit, we can discuss salary. What if you, you know, get past that recruiter interview, you kind of talked about the salary range. Are you able to kind of like go back on what you said to the, and go to the hiring manager and kind of be like, uh, I actually think I want this much and this is what I'm more so looking for in terms of salary. Is that like a big no-no? If you gave a number at the beginning yeah. and now you're like, actually, I've thought about it and I'm really looking for more. Yeah. I think you can frame it in a specific way, which okay. is going through this interview process. Um, I've been really excited to mm -hmm. learn about the roles and responsibilities. Yeah. Really excited to work with type, with this type of team. However, based on what you're saying, you would be looking for somebody with X amount of experience, mm -hmm. which I have. Yeah. And because of the needs of this role, I would be looking for X. Yeah. Because that's new information. You didn't yeah. have it at the point in which you first gave that um, salary range. Yeah. Okay, Gina. So... If you're scheduled a call or if you're scheduled an interview with a recruiter, yeah. there's a lot of different ways in which you could have this interview, right? Yeah. You could have it over the phone. You yeah. could have it in person, over Zoom. Yeah. Um, how do you think you should be approaching these? Well, I feel like most of the recruiter interviews I've had have been over the phone, which makes sense. I think it's really like, like you said, they're just quickly mm -hmm. trying to get to know if you're qualified for this role. I personally shine in person and being able to show my pearly whites over Zoom or in person and just really exude this like energy that I have. Mm -hmm. But I think like with phone interviews, you really are just kind of 
making sure you have your notes. Like, I feel like I always have notes open because like they can't see me. Right. They don't know what's going on on this other side of the phone. So I have my notes ready and I feel like I can be a little more prepared than I would be if I were like in person because like I can have everything out in front of me. Honestly, this is probably not a good tip, but I can Google things. Like <laughs> I can look things up if I'm on the phone. Like is that is Do that Do you bad? mute yourself so they don't hear the clicking? I mean... It's 2023. I don't think there's like a lot of clicking noise and a lot of... I'm an aggressive typer. You can always hear when I'm clicking. I got clicking. the nails. I'm like... Um, but no, like, yeah, I'll maybe mute it for like a little bit. I also live in New York, so I'm probably muting it every single time I'm not talking because there's like trains and buses and right. explosions. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like with phone interviews, like the approach is just like... For me, I probably shouldn't be as laid back, but like I do feel a little better knowing that like they can't see me and I'm just kind of like answering these questions and I can have my resume like right in front of me and I don't have to like feel weird about looking at it. But who knows? Is that even the right approach? Like, am I saying things that are just like cuckoo and not actually good advice? No, I think what you're saying is really great advice. You know, if you think about the approach of a phone interview, Mm -hmm. um, for me, I feel like I could be in a relaxed state. I'm a pacer. In your pajamas. So when I'm having a phone interview, I'm typically walking back and forth. Helps me think. I don't think there's any science behind that, but I do like the movement. Um, I think you brought up a really good point about having your resume out. Mm -hmm. Um, I will typically advise candidates to have a cheat sheet. So you can use that if you're on a phone interview or even on a Zoom half screens yeah. just put your oh yeah I don't actually recommend the whole resume because sometimes you're like that's a lot of words I, I think I like kind of do notes based yeah. off of like if the recruiter or hiring manager is looking at my resume they're reading it from like top to bottom mm-hmm. I'm literally like my notes are me basically explaining that stuff in order okay yeah yeah so um I would say if you're going to have a copy of your resume up, Mm -hmm. maybe just highlight the sections that you know you want to speak to just based off of your understanding of the job description and what they might be looking for. Yeah. Um, But yeah, having like a little five bullets of either like what are these key accomplishments you may want to make sure to talk about? Mm -hmm. What are those skills you saw that they needed that that you have? Yeah. Or even sometimes if you know you're not great about thinking of tell me about yourself or, you know, why you want to leave this company. You know, if you think you're going to kind of freeze on the spot, having those kind of keywords to help jog your memory of like, Mm -hmm. what are the main points I want to talk about to answer this question? Yeah. That can be really helpful. Yeah. If you're on the phone, recommend smiling while you talk. Who can tell? You can can hear a smile. I hear your smile right now. You can hear a smile. I think... I always talk with a smile. So you should be always, to- always a hear it. Bubbly girl. She's, I was going to say she's a pessimist. That is not the right word. Optimist. She's an optimist. I'm the smart one here. She's an optimist. Yeah. Um, and that really goes a long way. Yeah. Because then they can really get a sense of your excitement and enthusiasm for a role. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes those nonverbal cues, you know, mm-hmm. they can really hear it. You, you know, you don't get a lot of that in a phone interview. So that's one way in which you can express that excitement. Yeah. And if you're on Zoom, it's helpful to make that eye contact with the camera. Yeah. Just like you would imitate making eye contact with a person. Yeah. um, During an interview, you know, sometimes we got to look away. I look away when I think. I look away all the time. I'm not even looking at you right now. I don't like making eye contact, (laughs) but that's just like a me thing, a little anxiety girl. But I think like you're even saying like kind of just like, as fake as it might feel, just like kind of like having that sense of enthusiasm because like at the end of the day, like I feel like a recruiter or a hiring manager, like they want to know like you're excited and you want this job. Like it does feel like kind of fake sometimes, but like they want to know that like you, like, is you it want the job. Fake? I think it's fake because I'm like, I just need money. Oh my, <laughs> like, I guess I'm like, I'm of the camp where it's like, okay, if you've applied for this job, you want there's got to be something in there that yeah. drew you to it, right? Well, I'm also the type of person who like, I don't like to get too excited about things in case they don't happen. She's a realist. Yeah. Okay. Because like, what if I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And then they're like, boo, we don't want you. Nobody's ever said boo, we don't want you to you. I don't know my life. (laughs) I think we asked you earlier and you said- Everybody wants me. Everybody (laughs) wants me. (laughs) But yeah, I think that's good advice though. Like, ace that phone interview. Do it. 
Well, I think this is a really, really good time for my favorite, favorite Ooh. part. And we're going to take some questions a from question? a viewer. Esperanza says, recruiters always ask at the end of the interview if I have any questions for them. I do have role specific questions for the hiring manager, but I can't think of any good questions for the recruiter. What should I be asking? I feel like you kind of touched upon this, but like, I did, this but is a good question. Esperanza, I'm speaking to you. Yeah. Um, oh. One always have questions. Yep. There are going to be times where maybe during an interview, you've been able to ask some because it felt like a conversation, which is really great. Your but buddy. Yeah, you're flowing. Yeah. You made that connection. We love that for you. It's really great to do, mm -hmm. but always keep a few in your back pocket. Yeah. I always recommend three to five questions mm -hmm. for the recruiter. Yeah. Ask about next steps. Next steps. Ask about um, if there are any skills or requirements that mm -hmm. are needed for the role that mm -hmm. maybe you haven't touched on mm -hmm. that you can elaborate, take that time yeah. to elaborate on and, and do. Uh, ask them about timing. Mm -hmm. When are they looking to fill this role? Yeah. You can even ask them if they have any concerns. Yeah. You know, is there anything that you saw or that I didn't speak to yeah. um, that gives you a moment of pause? Because yeah. I'd really like to clarify that. And I'd really like to um, address that with you. I feel that. And I also think Esperanza, like, hey, if you got to the stage, like I just said, like you're already on a good track. You just really need to like clarify if this is the role for you. Interview that interviewer. Absolutely. I-T-I. Hashtag. Hashtag I-T-I. Yep. That's it. Well, that's all we've got. And if you're ready for more job search advice, please make sure to drop any comments with a question for us, any topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Jen is dying for more of your job search stories and advice that we could give for them. And we'll see you next time. And we're going to talk about decoding that job description. I love job descriptions. We're going to be I like spies everything. and we're going to figure that out. If you found this advice helpful, please make sure to subscribe, rate the podcast and leave us a review wherever you listen to your podcast. And we'll see you next time. Bye. I'm going to look at this camera. I'm going to look at this camera. <laughs> I keep fighting my mic. I Again, have hand, tapped it so hand many times with combat. my mouth. Okay, so past, present, future. So I should like present, give past, future. Present, <laughs> present, past, future. You can do past, present, future. Okay. But do you want to take some of these? I feel like you know some of these. I don't know anything. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. You can ask me things, and then I'll put it back on you. <laughs>